Hey Gogo. Bonjour. Hello Rufaro. Il est 11h38. En ce moment, à Harare, il fait 25 degrés avec du soleil. Ok, hi guys. Uh, no, it's not a French podcast. We are back again uh, with the Tegzim podcast and I'm Rufaro. I'm Farai. I'm Edwin. So, yeah, so uh, the IFA just happened uh, and some interesting things were launched there. So we're going to be talking about that, covering different projects and yeah, we'll see how... That goes. Oh, that goes. Yeah. <laughs> so it's a cool conversation when you just decide, yeah, we're going to talk about this. And yeah, let's but, jump into it. So to carry over from last week. So last week, if you didn't tune in, we talked about smartphone design. And something that kind of goes along with smartphone design was announced at IFA. And that's the new processor that's coming in the Huawei devices. And that will be the Kirin 980. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, it's coming to blaze the chip world again. <laughs> um, yeah, it's uh, so apparently Huawei claims about seven firsts. Um, I'm not too sure if I will be able to recall all of them, but Huawei is claiming that it's the first seven nanometer chip. It's uh, the first chip with a dual NPU. So all of this is some pretty geeky stuff, but basically. Um, all these improvements to its process are basically going to affect its um, its power usage. It's going to be consuming less power. It's going to be faster. It's going to be able to handle more processes at the same time. And because of more AI, it's going to be more intelligent, quote unquote. So, yeah. So you mentioned speed, right? And OnePlus, they recently announced their OnePlus 6 and they were like the speed you need so looking at you know smartphone processors generally across the board would you say the Kirin 98 is the fastest or you give that to the is, is it the a11 bionic chip from apple or it's the snapdragon, snapdragon 835 or maybe uh, it's 45, gonna be man. oh wait it's 45 yeah, oh. I, I think so <laughs> <laughs> so well, well, yeah, I mean, um, Huawei's have consistently been making uh, very, very fast CPUs. Now, I say CPUs because a process, in these like processors and smartphones, the CPU comes with a GPU. So in terms of the CPU component of things, the computing of things, Huawei has consistently been better than the rest of the competition for the equivalent chip. So it is going to be faster, faster than Apple's A11 chip. Not too sure. Probably really close. But um, uh, it's safe to say that uh, the Huawei chip might right now be uh, fighting with Apple in terms of uh, single core and multi core performance rather than all the other guys, MediaTek, Snapdragon, Exynos, yeah. those guys are still trailing behind a little bit. Uh, all right. So you're saying it's not going to be as fast as the Apple chips. So is it that Apple is winning because they control both the hardware and the software and everyone's kind of competing with like their last generation processors because I'm sure when Apple announces the A12 chips, they'll be like, way faster than whatever is on the android side yeah. well i think that's the thing with these comparisons that's the thing that's strange for me at least is uh Huawei is shipping a chip that's almost uh that's competing with uh a11 that's almost a year old now and 845 that's like six seven months old now so <sighs> The, co the, the competition is, is quite stale and soon there's going to be something else. So it, it, it's always fascinating for me because it seems pretty much like a, a big race thing for people who are really into that thing where I've got the fastest, I've got the this, but these processors are like, are like released pretty far apart. So the comparison is a bit strange because of that. But I do think their processor will be faster than A11, but then A12 is probably coming out. That's going to be faster than everything else. I would love to agree with you there as well. Like, um, 
it's more of a spec race. I mean, someone who's using a Snapdragon 820 or a Kirin 950 right now yeah. is really not going to... The average user is really not going to notice the difference between this year's chip and a chip from last year or even two years back. I mean, these chips are now perform Well, they have been performing quite well for... A while now that uh, yeah it, it doesn't really justify like someone to say okay I'm going for this because it's better you won't yeah. be able to see it I mean it's not like you max out your phone every time unless, you use it unless you're Fortnite gang or PUBG <laughs> gang then maybe maybe yeah. maybe but still the number of devices that can take care of that even right now. Mm. So processors processors are getting faster, right? Mm. And you now have these devices that are coming out at low price points like the OnePlus or even lower like the Poco phone, which was recently announced. And like uh, just after IFA, right, it was announced that the Poco phone got $28 million in the first five minutes of sale. Literally <laughs> within five minutes. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, they said it. It's unreal how the Poco phone can have so much specs for such a low price. And, well, people were like, yeah, let's check it out. I mean, <laughs> why would you not? Like, yeah, why would you not? Why you look you? at the reviews, they're all giving it praises on how it's the top performing, uh, top performing smartphone, Snapdragon smartphone on Antutu right now. It's beating the S9. It's beating the... I guess all the flagships that were announced this year are behind it. And and yeah, it's, it's... Someone would wonder how something that beats the flagship everywhere in specs and in price can still also beat those flagships in performance. I mean... It's uh it's it's interesting. Everyone wants to find out how how exactly this phone does it. I mean, is it can it put its money where its mouth is? Like that's what I'm I'm not too surprised to be honest, because if you think of it from from the from the perspective that um the poker phone is competing with phones such as the Moto G, which is like two hundred and sixty bucks. And the hardware you get in that, I don't remember the specs by head, but yeah, it's it's terrible compared to what you get in a poker phone, and you're just spending forty bucks. So I'm not surprised that they managed to sell like they managed to get twenty. Is this twenty eight million US dollars or what? I'm not sure actually. But, but yeah, I'm not, either, but way. either way, I'm not surprised exactly. Either way, be it rupees or whatever, I'm not. I'm not too surprised that. This is the outcome. It's a it's a big number, but yeah, man. Android Android really appeals to like the the guys who like read spec sheets and that kind of stuff. So not surprised. Kind of surprised, but not too surprised. So even though it's using the latest processor, it's as fast as you know the S nine and the other phones that have the latest Snapdragon processor. You often find out that these budget phones don't do so well in the AI category. So for example, the Huawei is coming with two dual neural processing units, right? That's like they are doubling down on their AI features. They are increasing the AI capabilities. And at IFA, Google announced that there's a new improvement to the Google Assistant, which you've heard by now when you started the podcast. Yeah. So now with Google Assistant, you can say, Hello, Google, right? So that uh, I don't want to trigger your <laughs> devices. So you can then say that, right? And then you can speak in any other language and it will reply with that language. So, for example, when we started, I spoke to Google in French and she replied in French to me. So it was like, whoa, uh, before you were kind of forced to speak in English. So you can like choose different uh, combination of two languages. You can go English, French, English, Spanish, Spanish, French, English, Japanese, like mix them up. But no and English, Shona. Sadly. <laughs> Sadly. <laughs> Which is where that comes in. Like, you're like, as great as this is, you know, you know, if I'm a bilingual person, I can speak in two languages and feel comfortable. When you bring it back home, it's like, ah, there's no Shona. <laughs> yeah, it's true. <laughs> Like, how do you then, 
I mean, it always takes a while for these things to come. I mean, when we're chilling with Google, you can understand that uh, the Gboard only introduced like Shona, I think, two years back, a year or two back. And other languages have been on Gboard for a while, like for a while. So, I, and you, you start to think Shona addiction and all that, or Debel addiction and all that. Or nyanja addiction and all that, like <laughs> it goes on. It's gonna be, <laughs> it's gonna be tough for these guys. I mean, it'll end up being a demand thing in the end. Like they'll just look at it and be like, how many people use this language, and the number of people will then determine priority for them to make it available. Uh, uh, so speaking of a while, um, I'm someone who, so I don't speak like flu, fluent, fluent French, right? However, I've been trying to finish learning. And one of the barriers is you don't have anyone to talk to in the language locally, like especially if you're not going to school where they're teaching you those lessons. So could this be an avenue for someone to learn a second language? Because now if you're using online tools like Duolingo or Memrise or these other apps that teach you different languages, you can then practice it in oral form with the, with the assistant and it replies within the same language. So it forces you to both know what to say and understand what it's saying. Do you think that could be a use case or it's just not AI in terms of assistance? It's not there yet to help you converse in a way where you learn a language better. I think I hadn't thought of it in that way, but now that you say it, I think it's it's not a perfect way to start learning, but it's definitely a way to start learning. Uh, point being, the more you speak to your phone in French and it replies, the more confident you are at speaking in French and the more, um, the better you're getting at actually comprehending like spoken word and that kind of thing. So for a scenario where you're not going to school, you don't have people who you can talk to in French or Spanish or whatever, it's, it's a good, it's a stopgap. It's a good, it's a good thing to have. Yeah, it is. I mean, I'm looking at it and I'm like, if you, if you look at, um, how you talk to uh, well, what Farai was saying that um, it might not be the best way to start learning another language using this dual language feature but it is a very good way of just exploring the language that you're already learning like having sort of like a real world scenario of the language that you're learning so I think it will help in that regard if you're into that uh, said Lishwana, not yet, but uh, <laughs> I hope soon. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, it's a good thing. Mm. And they'll only get better because, you know, they uh, earlier in the year, they also announced that you'll be able to, like, say hello, Google, and tell it to make a reservation at a restaurant, yeah, and yeah, Google, will, like, it, yeah. call the restaurant <laughs> and make the reservation for you and actually speak to a human being on your behalf. So it's like we're living in a crazy time, yeah. but... Speaking of that, what's 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 your opinion on on duplex? Do you think that if you call uh, a restaurant, a barbershop, whatever, and you're making a reservation, uh, obviously this is far from Zim once again, but uh, do you want this uh, as, this robot assistant to inform you that you're speaking to uh, Google duplex, or you'd rather just believe that you, it's a human being? I think if it's got nothing to do with like uh, sensitive stuff, like a bank, like calling okay. my oh, bank okay. to say, okay. oh, yeah. this guy would like, you know, to transfer money to <laughs> this account. If it's not something sensitive like that, I don't really mind. Because I would actually think maybe it takes out the, the fantastic part of AI. Like if it tells you that, hey, I'm a robot and... Uh, I'm talking to you. You're like, oh, okay. This is if you talk to it naturally, like you're talking to a person, and the conversation is flowing so just yeah, like yeah. normal. Just it's like, like yeah. well, okay. Uh, Why not? I love it, but at the same time, I'm afraid of it. Like, uh, um, I feel Google Duplex is a fantastic 
thing. It's it's a really fantastic piece of technology. Yeah. My only concern is it probably is still a little bit too soon. Like um like removing the headphone jack. Like removing the headphone jack. Yes, it's something too soon in what sense? <laughs> too soon in like the sense. We're not ready. I think we are not ready <laughs> because it's still people are still struggling with a phone that just talks to you. Like yeah. Like just I really talk to my I don't talk to my phone. <laughs> I don't talk to my phone. <laughs> I mean yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean using Google Assistant, people are like, What? You can talk to your phone? And now the phone can actually call someone else and the phone talks to them on, on your behalf. behalf. <laughs> so that is still something that yeah. I feel is uh, rise of the terminal. Is, you know, it's it's <laughs> We're getting there. Surely we are. I mean, yeah. people are used to navigation, talking to them. People are used to yeah. uh, some doors or some elevators talking to them, telling them which floor they are or which room they're entering or if it's locked and whatnot. So we're not that far off. I mean, we're close. But I feel like let's give it a, a year or two. Like, let's just get used to it a little bit more. It was a good thing that Google announced it now so that people know that such stuff can exist mm -hmm. and now it's just that uh, acceptance phase of just saying you know what it's here and it's got some cool perks that it can do for me on my busy schedule so let's just roll with it that's how i feel uh interesting interesting and so the last thing that we're gonna cover didn't really happen at uh ifa but it's it's kind of like touching with uh this whole issue of software evolving and becoming better in hardware as well so you discover that in the case of ai like you're afraid of an assistant talking to a service provider on your behalf now there are cars where you can just sit and it drives you around and most of those cars are electric cars you know electric cars are a new thing we've been used to gasoline powered cars not gasoline but is it petrol petrol, yeah. petrol or they call it gasoline fuel. <laughs> yeah fuel right we've been used to those cars yeah. and mercedes just so happened to have announced a new electric car just after ifa and yeah. Yeah. it's like are we ready for electric cars is it too soon uh do we need it uh you know there are manufacturers like tesla we hear that tesla is not doing so well in terms of the balance sheet however are they kind of helping us get there like google they're like hey you can do this now not now but like hey this is coming get get ready get ready for it well i think if we're speaking uh speaking to uh are we ready for zim zim context uh, i don't think we're ready I don't know if any of you oppose that, but I think Zim is still quite far off. But maybe globally, I think it's necessary. I think we're ready. And I think people are actually not um, not as ho as hostile to electric cars as they are to like AI or self completely self-steering cars. Those are the ones that are really driving people nuts, like I would say, and that kind of thing. But I think it's interesting to see big guys such as Mercedes. Of course, there, there are other guys like, I think Ford has been doing this for a while now, Nissan, and, and but Mercedes is like a really big name. So to see them get in this space, it's quite interesting. Are they going to uh, overtake Tesla? Are they, you know, there's a lot of questions to be asked and we'll see. I think it's an interesting, few months, years ahead. Yeah, I mean, um, people are touting it as the Tesla killer and all that. And in terms of the world being ready, um, electric cars aren't really a new concept. It's just that petrol heads would prefer to hear their engines. So it's a preference thing. Um, actually, there's a study that I read that was saying um, a lot of the millennials right now would prefer an electric car because, well, thanks to Tesla, electric cars are, are offering a supercar performance in a sedan, basically. So they are like, yeah, in terms of the thrill of the ride, uh, millennials prefer electric cars. Traditionalists still feel like, ah, something powered by batteries is the weak stuff. <laughs> I mean, uh, batteries 
they just die and after they die they take so long to charge and Tesla is like yeah they're superchargers I mean they're not as as quick as topping up yeah. an 80 liter tank but <laughs> it is much much faster than it was before I mean it's no longer 18 hours or 16 hours to so so it's it's quite fantastic that another player has entered the field Mercedes Benz is a big car company, as Farai was saying, and for them to then jump into that as well and actually throw it, throw an electric car to the mainstream, it's actually fantastic because now it means there's more money in terms of R and D that's going into the space of electric cars, and it's going to accelerate the pace at which electric cars get better, maybe catch up to. Uh, normal fossil fuel cars in terms of range, which is what most people are worried about. Yeah, range. Yeah, yeah range and the time it takes to recharge. I mean, it's a it's a fun place that I think uh, Mercedes Benz has entered, and yeah, we're ready. Well, not mm. in Zimbabwe, but yeah, we're, we're ready. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and hopefully we we'll have you know more players coming into different spaces like. The smartphone industry, where we just woke up one day and now they are number two, yeah. and then we have Poco Phone coming and they are rattling the cage. We have Mercedes coming up in the electric vehicle. There's Cortana trying to you know fight in the digital system <laughs> world and all these things. So it'll be interesting to see how it all goes. And um, unfortunately, we can't deep dive into everything that we'd love to talk about because of time. But do let us know what you'd like to hear us talk about on the podcast and we'll look into it and cover some of the topics where some of these things are really interesting. Like, we've just scratched the surface in terms of electric cars. We could go on for exactly. an hour just talking, <laughs> talking about, about electric. electric cars and especially bringing it closer back to home to what can be done, you know, and if you're someone who would like, you know, you can reach out to us and we can see if we can have you here as a guest and you can talk to us about something that you're interested in. So do leave your comments, uh, like, share, tell the buddy. Uh, this is Ufaro signing off. For I, I'm out. Edwin, I'll see you in the videos. Not again. <laughs>